This video was brought to you by Mubi, a one-of-a-kind streaming service with hand-picked cinema classics from all over the world. Get your first month for free at www.mubi.com slash filmradar. When you were a little boy, what did you want to be when you grow up? And I wanted to be a movie director. I was eight years old. I, I, was eight. I walked out of the Rafael Theater on 4th Street in San Rafael, and I'd just seen um, Butch Cassidy and Sundance Kid, and I walked out and I got my dad's 65 Impala, and he said, what did you think? Because he loved the movie. And I said, that was amazing. And he said, so what do you think about it? You know, what do you, and I said, I want to make movies. This is Marin County, this is San Anselmo, um, Marin County Bay Area in San Francisco. You're talking about THX 1138 it was made at the Marin County Civic Center. The Godfather was shot on Shady Lane and, and Ross. Invasion of the Body Snatchers. The Candidate, of the conversation. I mean, everyone on my block wanted to be a director. I mean, George Lucas was my neighbor, so it was kind of like you were going, sign me up, you know. You know, because I'd made movies from the time I was eight. I'd made Super 8 movies, and I, you know, the dominoes were starting to kind of fall for me about coverage and over-the-shoulder shots and, and, and how you knit, you know, a scene together. I kind of, when I got into high school, I worked um, after school directing plays and doing lighting for plays. Um, and then at night from six till midnight, one in the morning, I was a projectionist. I saw all the jazz 200 times. I saw 1941 200 times. So it was, it was, you know, it was whatever, whatever was there that was interesting, I was, I just would watch it. What was your first break? How did you, what was your, your first lucky moment that got you towards the, on the path you wanted to be on? Well, I, I worked in a dark room. I, I, I started working for John Cordy. Uh, a local filmmaker who was one of the original sort of triumvirate of omnizoetrope. So it was Francis Coppola, George Lucas, and John Cordy. I was just out of high school and I'd gone to a um, sort of summer school film program. A friend of mine who had been through this program had gotten a job work for Cordy and, and, was, and was in the darkroom. I mean, it was really, really, it was big technical photographic stuff and it was I liked it you know it was fun I did a lot of that in high school and um, so I did that for about six months seven months and then I moved into the animation department mostly just moving boxes and being a PA beyond that then you were you worked on some uh, ILM or something yeah I got a job my roommate was uh, worked in the was a, a camera assistant in the math department at ILM I was helping the visual effects department it was run by a guy that I worked for in the dark room and he had this idea, there was a sequence in the movie where characters had to fly through live action traffic. And so I had this idea that I would take Steadicam and I was going to try to gyro stabilize it or something and, and I could do this flying plate and I could shoot this um, at like three or four or five frames a second. So I was trying to rent the equipment in San Francisco and so I called my friend who worked in the math department there and I said, you know, we find out when they're going to be done with it because I want to rent because I have this idea to do this, this um, undercrank Steadicam stuff. He said, who told you about that? I said, no, when I just had an idea that I needed to solve me, he's like, I can't talk to you, man. I'm going to call you back. I got a call about an hour later and it's Dennis Murin and Dennis Murin goes, who told you about the undercrank Steadicam stuff? And I said, well, I don't know. So they were working on the speeder bikes for Return of the Jedi. And they were working on the same, at the same time. And so I kind of came up on their radar. So well, they had an opening and I got a call from, and Craig put me up for it, said, you know, you should talk to Dennis Mirren about this and you could come. And I was a, you know, meter jockey, just shooting green, you know, blue screen uh, chicken walkers. I shot chicken walkers and I got to work with my heroes at the time, you know, I got to work with Phil Tippett and Tom Sanamon and Joe Johnston, and Dennis Mirren and, and uh, 
I came to LA hopefully to make movies, but but to make television commercials. And I worked on the weekends, and I did um, with some friends of mine. We sold an idea to the American Cancer Society um, that had a a fetus smoking a, a cigarette in utero. Would you give a cigarette to your unborn child? You do every time you smoke while you're pregnant. Which we thought was hilarious. And it had, you know, did it for like eight thousand dollars and it made made it had been banned on three networks and so all of a sudden I was like interesting to people and I did a music video and I came to LA to make music videos and and I did that for a while but um, but the whole idea I mean music videos for me was like you know at film school. It was like somebody was gonna pay for me to play. And I went to the biggest music video companies of that time. Um, and the biggest one was Limelight. I had a, an agent, and I had them pass my reel along to Simon Fields, who um, wrote a, a note back to the agent saying, this guy has no talent. <laughs> we have no interest. And, and I vowed at that moment to um, dance in the ruins of Limelight. And I, uh, I signed with the commercial director. I was signed by the music video division and we were sort of relegated into the back with the janitorial staff. We were there, we were ignored, we were humiliated. And the four directors, um, three other directors and I decided to start our own company. And that was propaganda. We went from billing together about two and a half million dollars a year and three years later, we were billing 65, 75 million dollars a year. And we had the biggest music video commercial company in Hollywood. And when it came to the first feature, yep. Alien 3, what was the problem? There's no one problem with a, you know, 65 million dollar fucked up first time <laughs> filmmaker. <laughs> Look, I, did, I, made a, I made a crucial error. I listened to the people who were paying for the movie. And basically that translates into meet a lot of people who are going to resent you and your age and are not going to want to take instruction from you and allow them to tell you what you can't do. So yeah, I signed up naive and, um, and went off to Pinewood to be sodomized ritualistically for two years. <laughs> so I kind of retreated back to doing television commercials and and had no expectation that I would ever be employable again. And um, I got a, I got sent a script, and it was seven. I got to John Doe, walks into the police station and gives himself up. Detective! You're looking for me. And I was holding the script, like I knew how many pages were left, and I was going, you can't do this. Like this is like this is against the rules. Like so, I called my agent and I said, "This is insane. this head in the box ending is it's unbelievable." And I went out, started meeting cast. I was driving my car back to the office and I got a call saying, "Brad wants to do it." I called Morgan Freeman and he said, "I'd love to do this," and we did it. There are seven deadly sins, Captain: gluttony, greed, sloth, wrath. Pride, lust, and envy. I took a souvenir. <laughs> Her pretty head. On is the way and heart that out of hell leads up to life. What do you get from the man who has everything? Who did this to me? Gentlemen, welcome to fight. You're the only single male dancing craft of the world. We're not coming out, and we're not letting you in. Get out of my house! This is the Zodiac speaking. I'm not the Zodiac. And if I was, I certainly wouldn't tell you. What are you thinking? I was thinking how nothing lasts. 
What a shame that is. Can you I'm coming back for I'm coming back for everything. Something happened to him. Someone in the family murdered Harriet. And for the past 40 years, that's been trying to drive me insane. Elizabeth, I want you to help me catch a killer of women. The way he looks at me, I think, man of my dreams, this man of mine may kill me. Thank you to Mubi for sponsoring this video. Mubi is a one-of-a-kind streaming service with a refreshing take on the format. They offer a collection of curated films that operate on a monthly rotation. Each day, one new film gets added and one film gets removed, with each film available for streaming for 30 days. Every film is handpicked by their expert staff to provide a unique streaming experience that's unlike any other, featuring classics from acclaimed filmmakers from around the world. You can try out the service yourself with an extended 30-day free trial by heading over to www.mubi.com slash filmradar. Again, that's www.mubi.com slash filmradar for an extended 30-day free trial.